TechWorks is unique. Nowhere else on Earth will you be able to see how NASA trained astronauts to fly to the moon and back in the Apollo missions of the 1960s. Today's space missions are the direct descendants of those missions, but now they use 21st century tools and technologies to meet the challenges of exploring unknown worlds. At TechWorks, you will find the technologies that started it all. Here, you will be able to see the electronics and hardware that helped humans succeed at one of the most difficult and complex challenges imaginable, sending astronauts to another world and bringing them home safely. No matter where humans explore or in space, the technology changes, but the laws of physics remain the same, and the steps are the same. Plan, train, fly, and explore. Hi there, I'm Frank Hughes, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the training for space flights. How do we prepare astronauts for the journey into space? In the 1960s and 1970s, engineers built mission simulators, full-scale spacecraft surrounded by massive optical visual systems. These allowed astronauts and ground controllers to safely prepare for the dangers they would face while operating spacecraft, navigating, fixing malfunctions, and responding to crisis situations. These simulators were built five years before digital imaging existed, and even before video games existed. At TechWorks, you will see how Apollo astronauts learned to navigate by the stars. Mirrored reflections of ball bearings embedded in black spheres generated the three-dimensional star field so perfectly that astronauts called it the next best thing to looking out the spacecraft window. Hello, my name is John Murphy. In my senior year in the mechanical engineering department at Binghamton University, I was the team lead for the Binghamton University Mechanical Engineering Senior Design Project while working with TechWorks on the reassembly plan for the part of the Apollo simulators that supported the astronaut training that Frank Hughes discussed. Hello, I am Hassan Anarkulov. I, Jeffrey Hotailing, and Jalal Taylor were also senior mechanical engineering majors that with John made up the student team that took on the first phase of the reassembly project. After graduation from Binghamton University, I took a position as a mechanical engineer at Richards Manufacturing Company. Here is the photograph of the Apollo training simulators at Houston. The Apollo astronauts used the simulation facility to train in the use of the command module at the far end in tan color and the lunar module in the green color. This facility was designed and built by General Precision Link of Binghamton, New York. Components of the simulators were assembled and tested at the Binghamton Airport. The National Air and Space Museum has launched to TechWorks components of the Lunar Module Simulator Visual System, in particular, components of the Lunar Module Simulator Side Window. The visual system uses various optical and mechanical systems to project astronauts what the astronauts would see in the windows of the lunar module. This includes the star field and Earth as they travel from the Earth to the Moon. For training landing on the Moon, a simulated view of the lunar landscape is projected as the lunar module simulates descending and landing the Moon. The assembled lunar module side window display will be on exhibit at TechWorks. The showcase is divided into separate halls and galleries focusing on different local technologies. The Out of This World Technology Gallery focuses on air and space flight. The gallery will highlight the contributions of the numerous local companies to the Apollo Space Program. Next, Jack is going to talk about the TechWorks project we worked on. Thank you, Hassan. Here, we zoom in on the side window visual system. The side window visual system projects an image of what the astronaut in training would see out of their lunar module window. There are two of these systems, one for each astronaut in the lunar module. Our project was the first step in reassembling and exhibiting the side window visual system at the TechWorks Out of This World Technology Gallery. Our project recreated a 3D model of the side window visual system 
and designed a supporting cradle that the side vi window visual system would be mounted on. The side window visual system is made up of four large parts. This is the beam splitter collimator laying on its left side. The beam splitter collimator is the base and houses several large mirrors and beam splitters. The beam splitter collimator combines images from multiple sources and produces the image that the astronaut sees through the viewing window. The dimensions of the beam splitter collimator are six and a quarter feet by seven and a half feet by eight and a half feet. The starball assembly is the topmost component. At the top of the starball assembly is the starball, a non-reflective black sphere embedded with polished ball bearings arranged on the sphere in the pattern of the star field. A bright light source reflects off the ball bearings while the sphere is rotated to the proper orientation to show the star pattern that the astronaut would see as he flies to the moon. The simulated star field image is fed into the beam splitter collimator. The dimensions of the star ball are roughly eight and a half feet by seven and a half feet by seven and a half feet. The occulting device provides the bright light source and controls the portion of the light that illuminates the star ball in the star ball assembly. This simulates when a portion of the star field image is not visible to the astronauts due to the shadow of the sun by the earth. The dimensions of the occulting device are roughly 3.1 feet by five feet by three and a half feet. The CRT display feeds into the beam splitter collimator, either an image of the lunar landscape as the lunar module is landing, or an image of the command module as it docks with the lunar module. The dimensions of the CRT display are roughly four feet by three and a half feet by 3.3 feet. Now Hassan will describe the details of the project's objectives. Here are the four members of the team making an initial assessment of the beam splitter collimator. The team had two project objectives. The first objective was to create an accurate 3D model that can be manipulated in computer-aided design, or CAT software. The 3D model supports the planning for reassembly of the side window visual system components. We call this the stack. The second objective was to design a supporting cradle that we call the stand that will support the stack on exhibit. The team spent many days at TechWorks examining the components and making detailed measurements. Much of the detailed work was done at TechWorks as Jack will describe. The detailed measurements of the components were entered into computer-aided design modeling software. While working together, the team created the 3D model of each component. With some assemblies as large as those in the stack, the team had to work together to obtain even the easiest of measurements. Once each component was modeled, the team then combined all of the components into a complete 3D model of the stack. Asan will now show you the product of the hard work everyone put into this project. Here is the completed model of the stack. The dark triangular geometry you see is the window that the astronauts view. The stack is over 16 feet tall and occupies a 10 by 10 footprint. With the model of the stack complete, the team designed and analyzed a stand that will support the stack in the Out of This World Technology Gallery. The stand went through extensive analysis to ensure that it would safely support the stack. Here's the assembled stack and stand. Within the stack, there are large mirrors and beam splitters that combine and guide the images of the stars, Earth, Sun, and the lunar surface to the window that displays the images to the astronauts as they train to fly to and land on the moon. Hassan and I would like to leave you with some thoughts about our experience on this project at TechWorks. 
We worked with a wide combination of TechWorks volunteers, ex-NASA engineers, Binghamton University faculty, and students. This mix of experience, technical knowledge, and creative thinking created an atmosphere where everyone contributed in their unique way. Concerns to be addressed were brought to the team, ideas were generated to resolve said concerns, and concepts were introduced that would assist in the process of our analysis and creating our deliverables. The two standout factors of our capstone project were working with an organization outside the university and then we would be teaming up with a manufacturing company to build the stand. I was very excited to start this project as we were going to be working, quote, in the real world. The knowledge and experience gained by working with a mix of TechWorks volunteers and supporting organizations was something we would not have had just working within the university. Secondly, by teaming with a manufacturing company that will fabricate the stand, we could really focus on the design and analysis aspects to create our best work while also collaborating with the manufacturing professionals to make sure that our design was up to industry standards. On top of this, it was highly motivating that our design of the stand will be an integral part of exhibiting a Smithsonian Apollo program artifact of historical importance. When we started the project, the biggest challenge we faced was determining how we were going to approach the project. We found there was no source material like drawings or reports to obtain critical technical information. This led to discussions on how to obtain the measurements needed to create the 3D model and then design and analyze the stand. We decided to directly measure the components to an accuracy of 1 16th of an inch. With this data, we were able to create the 3D model to a high degree of accuracy. With the 3D model, we not only were able to design and analyze the stand, but TechWorks can also use the model for other exhibits and presentations. What did we learn from our experience? It may sound cliche, but we truly feel we gained valuable experience and insight that will help us in our future professions. We learned of the power of a diverse team of people with very different backgrounds. A diverse team brings different points of view, a wide range of knowledge and experience to bear. We also learned the importance of group dynamics in a well-functioning team. What we hope that you get from our presentation is the feeling of motivation and excitement that we experienced. We hope that you will tackle projects that you might feel is a little out of your comfort zone, but provides the opportunity to learn from the knowledge and experience of others. And ultimately, the satisfaction of working on a hard problem and bringing it to a successful end. The Apollo era technology at TechWorks can inspire the next generation of creative thinkers to design and build spacecraft that can be flown to worlds light years away. No one person, no one company, and no one government agency could have planned and executed a successful space mission. And it will take a dedicated team of people like you to realize the vision of TechWorks. Whether you bring your time, your skills, your ideas, or your donation, you can help kindle the spirit of exploration in the next generation. Come join us on our 21st century journey to inspire by example. At TechWorks, your participation has galactic impact.